What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of JM Exploring. Today, Megan and myself are gonna run you through the essential items that we believe you should bring on your camping trip or trip around Australia. I got a call off my uh, uncle who is doing a trip up north to Karajini and he's never done it before and he had a lot of questions to ask and it got me thinking. There's no international travel and a lot of people are gonna be doing this trip uh, this year and possibly next year so I thought I would be able to help greatly with the essential things that you should think about purchasing for the trip. So we're gonna jump straight into it and I'm gonna start with the most important thing, the first aid kit. Don't cheap out on one of these because self-explanatory, it could save your life one day. So go and get yourself a first aid kit. All right, secondly, toolbox. Now, if it was up to me, I'd bring every single tool that I could possibly bring because I just love tools. But I had to compress it down to this much. And uh, as you can see, it's not much but I believe that it will get me out of strife if I uh, ever need to change some bearings or do anything on the car. It allows me to service the car on the road um, and all that kind of stuff. So just uh, do some research and just work out what, what you think you would need on the trip in regards to tools. We will start over here. We'll get all the small stuff out of the way. These tap fittings. So when you're traveling around, you'll come across different size tap fittings. So make sure you get one of these hose connectors that uh, can screw onto the taps at caravan parks, wherever you find yourself, because there's different size ones. So this one here actually allows you to screw the smaller fitting in and unscrew the smaller fitting and use it as the big fitting. So go get yourself one of them. Another one, if you're heading up north, get yourself a 12 volt fan. We did it for a week without a fan and I was like, nah, stuff this, I need a fan. And it was the best thing I've ever done. So go get yourself a 12 volt fan. Um, they use stuff all power and you can run it all night and it will give you the best night's sleep. Or it will help. Uh, another thing, no matter what item you buy, whether it be an awning or a tent, they always come with crappy pegs. So go out to BCF or whatever and invest in a good set of pegs. Because you come to some places, where, where it's hard to uh, knock your pegs in and they bend very easily. There's a lot of compressed, crushed concrete areas where you park your car up and then you go to set your tent up and then you go to hit your pegs in and they just bend. So invest in some good pegs. Uh, another no-brainer, make sure you've got a compressor on board. Ours is uh, inbuilt into the troopy in the side of the car, but you can get ones that are uh, mobile compressors where you just keep them in a bag and you can uh, pull them out whenever you need it and get yourself some good line so you can pump your tires up when you've uh, been on the beach or whatever you need to do. Corrugations is a huge one. Let your tires down on corrugations, guys. Another one we've come across, a dual color LED control kit for the um, mozzies. So this one allows me to go from LED light to a orange LED light. And we basically just only use the orange one for my outside cooking. Uh, keeps the mozzies away. So go and invest in some orange LED lights. They, there's a few different kinds out there. This is a more of an expensive one because it's got a lot of different settings and a wireless uh, remote, but you definitely don't need that. Um, I just got a bit excited. <laughs> um, all right, elephant in the room. Engel, get yourself a good fridge. Do some research and uh, I'm not gonna go tell you to buy an Ingle, but I believe the quality of the Ingle is just the best. Uh, they offer warranty and they're all around Australia. So if something happens to this, I can pop into any store in Australia and they'll more than likely fix it for me. And then that'll bring me to what you will need to run your Ingle. So King's, everybody knows King Supercenter. If you don't, go look them up on Google. They're a brilliant place. I purchased a uh, solar blanket from there, 120 watt. And we actually run a dual battery setup that is in the car full time. But King's Supercenter, and there's a lot of other brands as well, they offer a brilliant option where you can get a battery box. Your AGM battery goes in there, your lid goes on, and it's got all your connectors in there. And all you do is you plug your solar panel in, solar panel charges your battery, which runs your fridge, which is just so easy. And uh, you should definitely look into that. All right, a few more things. Another one for when you go up north or anywhere where it's really hot, you're gonna want a nice shower before bed if you don't have uh, access to a nice creek or anything like that. So what Megan and myself have got is this nice and easy companions shower. That's a pump straight into a bucket and there's your shower head. And it's, uh, it actually does pump out some pretty high pressure water. So you could go and get one of them. We've also got a hot water shower um, that runs off gas 
and that is also another luxury but it's not essential but it is nice to have so there's a few options for you definitely get yourself a collapsible bucket and don't go to big w and cheap out on one of these because as you can see we did and it is very hard to put this collapsible bucket away so go and buy yourself a high quality collapsible bucket it'll come in handy a lot more than you think all right if we jump around here and i'm going to show you the last thing on this side and then we'll jump into the uh, barbecue setup and it is this here if you can and you've got a spare wheel on the back get yourself a spare wheel um, spare wheel carrier bag uh, canvas bag that goes over your wheel we keep our rubbish bag in there and it keeps it out of the car and uh, that is definitely something we would recommend having on your spare tire Alrighty, we'll jump over and I'll uh, show you the barbecue setup that we run. Alrighty guys, on the barbecue side of things, we went with the Companion's uh, high output barbecue. The reason I went for a high output is because some barbecues have a poor flame. Even when you have it turned up all the way uh, and you're in the wind, the flame goes out. So the high output allows us to boil the kettle, get the, the pan frying away in pretty high winds. So do some research and invest in a high output one. Uh, your gas line to your gas bottle. Make sure it's a good length uh, so you can either have your gas bottle sitting there like we do or you can have it on the floor depending on how high your table is. Don't let yourself get out to camp and realize that your gas line doesn't reach gas bottle. So that's one you gotta concentrate on. 4.5 kilo gas bottle is what we run. It lasts us about three weeks. So I don't think you need anything bigger than that unless you're going for a very extended period of time in, a, uh, in one spot which uh, won't allow you to fill up your gas bottle but us traveling around, there's heaps of places that allow for that. And make sure you've got a few water tanks and an emergency one in the car as well. You'll be surprised at how much water you'll use. Just before Megan comes on, two last things. Your pillows and mattress, they are the most important things I reckon. You wanna have a good night's sleep to wake up and go exploring the next day. Give them a test out before you go and see how comfortable they are. And the last thing I would say is your navigation. Navigation is huge because when you go up north, you're gonna to go to remote places where there is no signal at all. So just keep that in mind, that's a, that's a pretty big deal when you're out there in the middle of nowhere and you don't know where you're going. Uh, I'm gonna pass it over to Megan now and she's gonna show you some things that we definitely did not think of before we went on our trip. Okay, so these items are not exactly essentials, but they're things that we've discovered along the way that have made our travels so much more comfortable and easier and they're also all under 30 bucks as well so that's a bit of a bonus first off we've got our little fold out table this was just from Kmart super cheap and it also just slots down the side of our fridge as well when it's folded up so really compact makes life a bit easier second we have got the dishmatic probably seen these before you just chuck your dishwashing liquid in there and that makes your dishes a lot easier to do I did see on another van life channel another way that they did their dishes was to keep their water and detergent just in a spray bottle and then just wipe over their dishes with that as well so that's another cool tip that you can use we've got these roll up bags these were just from Woolworths but they're super compact because we tend to forget our bags if they're you know those normal fold up ones we've also got these little clips just from Ikea for food storage. Whenever we buy something, as soon as we open it, we'll throw away the box because it takes up too much pointless space and then we'll just chuck one of those on it and it all stays nice and fresh and sealed. We've also got our giant drink bottles. We didn't originally leave home with these, but we found that we weren't drinking anywhere near enough water. So we just randomly found these in a Coles one day and grabbed them and now we try and drink at least an entire one every day. And then along those lines as well, we've also got our Camelbacks, which is pretty self-explanatory, but definitely, I would say that's essential if you're planning on doing lots of hikes. They definitely came in handy when we were around Karajini. This little board that we just got from Ikea, and they also sell them at Bunnings, we place it at the bottom of our ensuite when we're having a shower or toilet. And when you're having a shower, it makes it feel so much more luxurious. I don't know what it is, but... And lastly, we have got Monopoly Deal. We've also got Uno, any sort of card game. If you're sort of wanting to wind down at the end of a big day exploring, maybe you've got no service, can't watch Netflix or anything like that, that is definitely a handy thing to have, but fair warning, it may cause some arguments. Definitely has with us. 
So that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you learned something, maybe got some value from it. We'll try and keep these kinds of videos coming out every week. So if you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next time.